Welcome to Homeschooling Outside the Box, the podcast that encourages and equips moms who homeschool an outside-the-box child. Hey there, I'm Cindy Renna, and this is Episode 6, Nurturing Your Preschooler's Body. So last time on the podcast, we talked about nurturing your home, your preschooler's mind, and today we will address the body. It was Charlotte Mason's belief that the child is a person, so we must educate the whole person, not just his mind. This led to her famous statement that education is an atmosphere, a discipline, a life. As a living being, your child has a body, and during the preschool years especially, it is important that you nurture it. So how do you nurture your preschooler's body? By helping them learn to regulate it and strengthen it. Let's talk about regulating. Habits, routines, boundaries, and sensory play are your key phrases here. Let's take a look at each. Habits. The first three habits of that Charlotte Mason suggested for the early years, and I've tacked on cleanliness, encapsulating both hygiene and picking up after oneself. All of these habits deal with self-control to some extent. This is usually a huge struggle for outside-the-box kids, but do not despair. Keep your expectations realistic, and remember, slow and steady wins the race. Practicing habits in conjunction with a really great therapy program is key. If you're looking for a really great therapy program, you might want to scroll back to the episode I did about the Sunrise program. I highly recommend you purchase the book, Laying Down the Rails. This is available through the website Simply Charlotte Mason. Um, It's called Laying Down the Rails, and it will give you guidance for habit training. All four of the habits I'm talking about here are covered in great length in that book. So here's Charlotte Mason's top three suggestions for the preschool years. Obedience, truthfulness, and attention. And then I've added on cleanliness, uh, like I mentioned, in regards to taking care of one's body and picking up after oneself. Beyond these, you want to be working on building good communication habits and curbing bad habits like whining, yelling, and interrupting. All right, routines and boundaries. Routines help you be predictable, which is huge in helping your child feel safe and have more successful days. They create a natural flow to your day, and boundaries help children understand what is acceptable and what is not. Routines are the pillars of your day that help your child be most successful. They are often set around meals, outing, outings, and rest times. Routines are things that you do every day or every week. And the more rock solid your routine is, the less drama in your day. My children rarely give me trouble in the mornings because we've had the same routine for years now. It goes without saying what is expected of them. We'll talk more specifically about schedules in a couple of episodes, though. Boundaries serve a similar purpose, but they're more circumstantial. So boundaries have a lot to do with safety and character. It's not fair to have inconsistent boundaries. How would you feel if you were driving 45 miles down the street one day and it was perfectly okay, and the next day you got pulled over and received a ticket? It's very difficult to enforce too many boundaries, so be very selective about what you choose. You want to ask, is it something you can consistently enforce? Is it really that important? Does it deal with character? Is it a safety issue? Does it inhibit natural and organic childhood development? Sensory play. Sensory play is simply play that engages the senses. Many of our outside-the-box children have problems regulating their sensory systems on their own, so they need some extra help from us in this area. Some of our favorite activities include playing on a tabletop in a shallow bucket of sand, rice, beans, or goo uh, separately. Obviously, you don't want to combine these things. That would be a huge mess. Play-Doh would fall here too, but because we don't do gluten, we don't have it in the house. We also have a sensory goodie basket that I pull out during read-aloud time, and the kids are free to fidget away as long as they are not too loud. Here are some of the things in our bucket. A pinwheel, nesting dolls, a kaleidoscope, squeeze balls, fidget spinners, and pin art. 
All right, now for strengthening. Healthy eating habits and playing, outdoors and indoors, are your key words when it comes to strengthening your preschooler's body. Healthy eating habits. This phrase is so overused, it's become vague. What in the world does it mean? Well, here's what it means to us. Drink lots of water all day long. The goal is half the ounces of your child's weight. So if your child weighs 35 pounds, they should be drinking 15 ounces of water a day. Avoid juice and sugary drinks. Avoid fruits that hurt, avoid foods that hurt them. Find out any food sensitivities and remove them from their diet. Eat foods that help them. I challenge you to take a look at the Daniel Plan plate and aim for that. You can Google this or if you really want to know more about this topic, you can purchase the book. It's called The Daniel Plan and it's really eye-opening when it comes to our food. Another fun idea is to create a food rainbow and you can play a game with your child and try to eat produce of every color every day. Littles love coloring in the rainbow throughout the day. All right, another thing is to eat sugar in major moderation. Sugar is in everything from breakfast foods to ketchup. Our kids are getting a constant flow of sugar in their day and it's terrible for them. We try to limit sugary treats to holidays and birthdays only and even baked goods. We try to hold back or make them ourselves at home. You can moderate the sugar that way rather than buying packaged things at the store. All right, and then the last is to take the basic supplements. Between the earth's soil being depleted and GMOs and all the other big food fun in Americans' diets, even if your child ate a perfectly balanced diet, which most preschoolers do not, they still might be missing out on some basics. In my opinion, and I'm not an expert in this field, but for us, we think every American should have a good multi-mineral, multivitamin, probiotic, and omega-3. If your child has belly issues like most outside-the-box children do, you can add a digestive enzyme in the mix. On to outdoor play. Never be within doors when you can rightly be without. Charlotte Mason. When I read Charlotte Mason's first volume, Home Education, the biggest takeaway I got was to go outside. So we did. But there's much more in the book. But the importance of time in the great outdoors cannot be overstated. Outdoor play goes a long way in developing gross motor skills. Climbing, jumping, skipping, swinging, and rolling are all essential body movements that assist with childhood development. Give them room to run, space to explore, and fight the urge to step in too often. Unless your child is blatantly going to hurt himself, bite your tongue and let him be adventurous. It's good for him. While they are probably a bit young for a full-blown nature study, Every little one loves a walk outside. Treasure boxes are the perfect thing to take on a nature walk with preschoolers. We take a drawstring bag or a lightweight box to transport all of our nature treasures home in. We have a table in our schoolroom especially for display items like this, and little miss loves to set all of her treasures out to look at after we come home. Indoor play. Stretching creative brain muscles by playing pretend can be done either outdoors or in. Encouraging and allowing your child to use his imagination is one of the best gifts you can give him. One of the fastest ways to strip him of this is to overload him on screen time. When you are indoors, try to choose toys for your child to play with that require him to manipulate them in some way in order to get them to move. I avoid obnoxiously colored plastic toys with bells and whistles and opt for more aesthetically pleasing wood toys with natural designs. Stick with classic toys like blocks, pull toys, dolls, action figures, things that go, and paper dolls. Uh, Melissa and Doug makes a really cute set of wooden paper dolls. These are way more durable than the ones I grew up with. Having a dress-up costume box for your child is a must as well. You'll want to have some arts and craft materials on hand too. So to recap... During the preschool years, the best way to nurture your child's body is to train them in good habits, namely obedience, truthfulness, attention, and cleanliness. Work on good communication skills and curb whining, yelling, and interrupting. Set routines in place in your home to give a natural flow to the day and teach them to your child. Set reasonable and realistic boundaries in your home and teach them to your child. 
provide material and opportunities for sensory play every day, develop healthy eating habits in your child, as well as the rest of the family, provide quality classic toys, art supplies, and dress-up costume box for your child to play indoors, and of course, go outside and play. Well, that wraps it up for this episode of Homeschooling Outside the Box. Thank you so much for listening. If you haven't had a chance yet, head over to iTunes and leave me a review. It would help other people who are homeschooling outside the box children to find me and get some equipping and encouragement as well. So thanks for listening and I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.